It is time for Dominaria to finally become whole. I will stitch perfection into the flesh of this land. Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. All right, so I am doing the, my top five budget picks for Dominaria United. We also did a top five value, present value. Um, again, this is a two year old set, but I'm doing kind of like a throwback and looking at the value of it. This set is unusual because it has maintained value so much. Most sets crash pretty quickly after release. This one has like had some weird ups and downs, but like, the top five cards are still pretty impressive. And here are my budget picks. Again, they're not the top five value uh, budget cards. They're my uh, my favorite ones. Okay, so we're gonna look at my picks for the top five budget cards before the bundle opening. Um, when I say budget, I mean $2 or less, so very budget. I know a lot of people are like $10 budget, and I'm like, you're not a teacher, huh? Anyway. Uh, these prices have stabilized given the amount of time since release, so that's kind of a nice thing is that these prices are going to remain a lot more consistent than something that's just been released. Um, again, I am using MTG Goldfish for this because it is just much easier to, when you, you want to see the whole set listed out. They're definitely much easier than like pretty much every other site that I've gone to. Anyway. Karn, Living Legacy, good old Karn. So we got uh, a four mana cost Planeswalker, legendary Planeswalker Karn. His plus one, create a tap Power Stone. Very good, um, Power Stones are just so useful. This is really a card you want for an artifact deck. If you've got an artifact deck, which I do when I don't have this card. I hope I pull this card, if I don't I should order one. Uh, and then put any amount of, oh, sorry, pay any amount, of, I can't read this, it's fun, pay any amount of mana, look at that many cards from the top of your library, then you may put w one of those cards into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. Yeah, card draw and kind of sorting, kind of a scry card draw effect, um, not bad, you know. Not really scry, I guess, but anyway, okay. And his minus seven, you get an emblem. Tap an artif uh, untapped artifact you control. This emblem deals one damage to any target. So all of your artifacts turn into like damage sources, including if you're making a whole bunch of like treasure tokens or something. Yeah, just damage any target as well. So if you want to like remove that pesky creature, no problem. If you've got enough, like uh, of whatever kind of artifact, just take a player out of the game. So you can win off this. You can use it for removal. You can. This is very flexible. Um, I really do need to get this for my artifact deck. Anyway, only 150. Tear asunder. So a friend of mine, Adam, actually recommended this card. Uh, I had it on a list of like removal to get our budget removal. So the main thing I always look at, at in a targeted removal spell is dealing with enchantments and artifacts. I think those are the two things you really need to focus on with the removal. Uh, creature removal is good, but remember there's combat. Combat removes creatures also, right? So there's kind of more ways to get rid of creatures than there are... Uh, these other things that can be a lot more of a pain in the butt, frankly. Uh, this also exiles. Okay, so it exiles, not just destroys, exiles. So indestructible, don't care. Also, if it has any kind of graveyard effect, doesn't matter. Um, and then you can pay a kicker of one black. So it costs four mana this way, which is expensive, but then you can just hit anything. You can exile anything you want from the board. Um, I would include this meaning it to use it for two costs, but the flexibility of like, if you really need it is there, paying four when you really need it is worth it because you need it. Anyway, 173. 
Relic of Legends. Okay, so this goes into the, like, uh, legend theme that this set is... I, th I, I keep wanting to say the set introduced it. I'm not sure about that, though. It's a relatively recent thing, focusing on, like, legendary as kind of like a card type to build the deck around, but yeah. In the previous video, we had Plaza of Heroes is also focused on legendary. It's just a very nice land, but this one, basically, yeah, it's a mana rock, pay three. You can tap it to add one mana of any color. Sorry, three to cast it, I mean. And then tap any untapped legendary creature you control, add one mana of any color. That is so good. Like, all of your legendary creatures just wait until, like, it's about to be your turn on the last player's end step and just tap all your creatures and then start casting like crazy. If you've got flash, if you've got instance, if you've got whatever abilities you can activate, things like that. You can just like go crazy and then untap everything right away when it's your turn. Um, this is $1.99. This is not a $1.99 card. This should not be a $1.99 card is what I mean to say. Legendary just is not that big a limitation. But anyway, okay. Rivaz of the Claw. Okay, so one black red. Again, so this is... Uh, I keep wanting to call it Gruel. It's not Gruel. That's red green. Rakdos, right? Rakdos. Oh boy. For a 3 3 of Menace. 3 for a 3 3 of Menace. Not bad. Starting out. But you can tap to add 2 mana in any, in any combination of colors. Spend this mana to only cast dragon creature spells. Oh boy. That is uh, a mana dwarf making 2 mana. It is. It has to be used in it, you know, for dragon creature spells, or I guess if you've got changelings, you can use it for changelings as well. Um, just sorts out a lot of problems. Once during each of your turns, you may cast a dragon creature spell from your graveyard. If that gets killed, it's exiled, but you've got this automatic recursion that you can really just take some huge advantage of, okay? Uh, the, the XL, if it gets destroyed again, that's not fun, but, oh boy, that's still such a, this, I feel like if I was going to build a dragon deck, this would almost be like a staple, but anyway, two dollars, Elias Il Kor, Sadistic Pilgrim, again, he's only Orzov, so he's white black for a 2-2 two -two with death touch, not bad for a start, but yeah. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. Not bad. Whenever another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. So, if there's a board wipe or something, they're just losing a mass amount of life, probably, right? So this is, yeah, great for Orzov, the color combination in particular. So if you have a token, aristocrat, life gain strategy, this is like, you almost won't need to include this. This is on a. I know this is on the uh, EDH rec uh, list of, uh, you know, auto includes basically or staples for um, Orzov aristocrats. I imagine is for life gain and like token decks as well. I guess aristocrat token. There's a lot of overlap there. But anyway, two dollars. What is your favorite budget card from this set? Again, I'm putting the set list in the description, so if you have a, a budget pack from it, please let me know. Um, these are definitely, I th think, a solid top five. Um, there's ones that, like, I would be quite happy to open any of these, even though they're not, you know, super valuable ones. Their Relic of Legends in particular, I think, is going to go up in value. Anyway, take it easy.